I remember when I first started making beats, it was just always so difficult to come up with anything that was good. I would struggle, make bad beat after bad beat, but every now and again, I would make something that actually sounded good to me. And I'd get really excited. It finally felt like I was making progress, like I was actually getting better. But after that, I would go right back to not being able to make anything good again. And this was really frustrating. I would listen back to that amazing beat that I made a week ago and just think, why can't I make something that good again? I would start to feel completely lost. I would just lose all my confidence and just the thought of starting a new beat would just paralyze me. And when I would try to make a beat, I would just feel like nothing I ever did was good enough. And this is what's commonly known as beat block. This is something that we all face and can be extremely difficult to overcome. But eventually I was able to take on an entirely new approach that really changed everything for me. It helped me get to the point where I actually don't suffer from beat block anymore. And that's exactly what I want to share with you. Now to start off, let's talk about IBM, the people that made computers back in the day. IBM had a problem. They couldn't figure out a way to motivate their salespeople. They had this high bar set for what they wanted. Let's say for example, it was 50K a day in sales. And they just found time and time again, no one was able to achieve that goal. They just could not figure out a way to get their employees to achieve at that high of a level. But then they made a shift, a change in their approach. And after this, they had tons of their salespeople not only meet that 50K level, but exceed it by just crazy amounts. What they did was they took that really high bar and just set it low. So for example, instead of the 50K a day in sales, they pushed it to something like $5,000 a day in sales. This is an idea that I got from a guy named Tim Ferriss, the idea being rigging the game so you can win. And this is exactly what I started to do with my own beat making. Most likely the reason why you have beat block is because you have this ridiculously high bar set for yourself that you force yourself to try to achieve. You listen back to that beat that you made a few weeks ago, which might be the best thing that you made in the last six months, and you think, I wanna make something that good again. You pursue this constant high level of quality that's impossible to meet, even for producers that have been doing this for decades. And this is probably what makes you abandon your ideas even before you give them a chance. In my video about three myths that new producers believe, I touched on this idea that you have to get through the bad ideas in order to get to the good ones. That's just the way it is. You never know when a good idea is going to show up. You have no control over it. It just happens when it happens. And knowing that, it would be foolish to feel like you're failing over something that you have absolutely no control over, like the quality of your beats on any particular day. Instead, why don't we measure success by something that we can actually control? And that's exactly what I started to do. Instead of focusing so much on the quality of your idea, focus on something that you can actually control, like time. I no longer decide whether my day was a success or a failure based on the quality of the beat that I made that day. Because I know what matters more, which is actually showing up every day and putting in the time. In the long term, the rest will sort itself out. A library of good beats is built by creating an even larger library of bad beats. So if I build a bad beat today, that's fine. I'm still doing exactly what I need to be doing. Personally, what I do is I just set a minimum amount of hours that I need to work a day. That's it. That's all. If a good idea shows up in that time, great. If nothing but bad ideas show up in that time and I make nothing but trash, great. My day is still considered a success and I feel equally good about it as long as I show up. So this is something that I recommend you guys do if this is something that you suffer with. Stop judging yourself based on the last beat that you made and how good it sounds compared to the best thing that you've ever done. Instead, just commit to showing up X amount of time a day. It could be half an hour a day if you lead a busy life. It could be three hours a day if you want to really commit to improving a lot quicker. No matter what, that's the one and only standard that you need to hold yourself to. That's what you're going to use to decide whether you had a successful day or not. Obviously, in that time, do try your best. Actually be concerted and try to improve your actual beat making skills. But if you fall short and you don't actually make something that's good that day, you've still succeeded. It might be hard to see it, but in the long term, you actually are getting closer and closer to where you want to be, which is to be an actual good beat maker. In adopting this change, you've absolved yourself of this huge impossible responsibility of making a masterpiece every single day. And instead, you've chosen to play a game that you can actually win. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. I really recommend watching the video that I mentioned before about the three myths that new producers believe when they first start out. I think there's some really good information in there that can really help you guys as well. As always, my free drum kit's available in the description box below, as well as a link to the Discord if you want your beats reviewed live. I do that every so often. My new beat making course is on its way, so head over to betterbeatmaker.com if you want to join up on the waitlist. People who sign up for the waitlist will get an exclusive discount, so you don't want to miss out on that. And I will see you guys next time.